go and watch that movie. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? You mentioned an Etherway drama. I'd like to see it. Certainly, Captain. I was hoping you would ask. Rizzles presents Barnaby on Rainio. Halcyon, Helen vs. the Brain Beast. Chapter 12. Starring Ruth Bellamy as Halcyon, Helen. It was the law forsaken parasites. I had become obsessed. My quest to stop them. To avenge my partner, Philip. And my ex-partner, Bernice. And Lieutenant Jurgen. And those two informants. Had brought me to Rizzo's distillery. But it wasn't just the triple distilled deliciousness of Rizzo Spectrum brand vodka that I found there. Okay. It was death. I made sure the brain eaters paid the price. But at what cost to me? Communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. Let me guess, this is about Halcyon Helen's murder. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. Aww. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. And what does this have to do with me? All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know what you're doing. Let me handle this. Captain Hawthorne, Sublight's favorite freelancer. I'm such an admirer of your work. Cedric Kincannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third-party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel. Least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is a heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. Um, having trouble seeing the death of a two bit actor as an assault on the colony. Two bit actor? Oh, Captain. This isn't Spencer Woolrich we're talking about. This is Halcyon Helen. Princess of Periodicals, Duchess of Dramaturgy. You would not believe the money she made us on Dissident Busters. For law's sake, Cedric, could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Ludovico, you wound me. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give him the impression that you can't be trusted. Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract. 
Because I promise you, I'll win. We can do this anytime you want. I'll even make an appointment. I'm sure your schedule's wide open. What with your product launch being indefinitely delayed due to unforeseen murder. All right, Cedric. If that's how you want to behave, I have no choice but to file an official reprimand on your permanent record. Oh, please do. I'd love an official reprimand from a failed executive. Could you do me a favor and have it laminated? Could we please stop this nonsense? Captain, I'm Constable Maria Keene. Hiring a third-party investigator was my idea. I've been studying your dossier. You're reliable and competent. You've been taking care of yourself ever since you arrived on Halcyon. And you're entirely independent. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case. Um... Right. Shouldn't this be the constable's job? Constable? I hate to admit it, but I'm a little out of my depth here. I'm used to dealing with rowdy VIPs from Byzantium, not murder. Okay. Please, Captain. I'm asking you to help us. While you're pursuing your investigation, we'll make you a guest of honor at the Grand Colonial. You can count on me. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Bud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Okay. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation. And if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. Uh... You seem competent. You could have dealt with this. I represent the law, Captain. But what's happening between Mr. Kincannon and the Administrator is... politics. Politics are not my area of expertise. Okay. The law is simple. Politics are complicated. That's not what I meant. All right. There's nothing I can't handle. Um. I'm pleased to hear that. From everything I've heard, you're a competent freelancer. And at the risk of sounding impertinent, we desperately need the help of someone competent. Thank you for your time, Captain. Whenever you're ready, I've authorized the Unreliable to land at the Grand Colonial. Here we go. Transmission terminated. Captain, we are now cleared to land at the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. I don't know why they're trusting me to catch Halsey and Helen's killer. There are several reasons why someone would hire your services. In descending order of likelihood, they are as follows. Desperation, confusion, mistaken identity, inebriation, and genuine faith in your abilities. Okay. Well, that's not too, um, um, uplifting. What can you tell about Eridanos? Eridanos is a hydrogen helium gas giant distinguished by a well-defined ring system. The Eridanos atmospheric complex is a system of land masses propelled through a thin layer of the upper atmosphere, where humans are potentially capable of surviving. Potentially. Okay. Thanks, Ada. Okay, we're going on a potential mission. Well... Looks like I'm taking Mr. Serial himself and Miss Ellie. Because she's familiar with Byzantium. You're up, dears. Let's go. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> I guess I ought to go there, right? <laughs> Holy crap. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Eridanos, recently famous 
for Halcyon Helen's death. How exciting. <laughs> Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? What can you tell what me about Eridanus? Would you like to discuss? I guess you can't. How tell can me I anything. be of assistance? Take care. I require a functioning captain to run a ship. That's not very reassuring. I'll lock up behind you. Thank you. I've seen Helen versus the Brain Eaters. This is Ellie's crowd, so. Does being on the case give us temporary immunity? Think they'll let us confiscate a few stray bits? I don't know. Let's talk about something else. Something on your mind? I guess not. Um. I know we got a murder to solve, but I say we take our time. Enjoy the hotel. No one's allowed off the islands except us. The killer ain't going anywhere. Unless they jumped off the edge. And they got some way to fly. Huh. Didn't think about that. Hmm. All right. You know, we don't have to catch Helen's killer right this second. Maybe we ought to take in the sights. You can do that. Yeah, I think I'll bring everyone here. Oh, here it comes. Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight, salvage, and shipping underground, or slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop, I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the inspector, to the grand ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. Okay. Bellhop, can you fill me in on the details of the murder? I can try. I was the one who found Helen's body in the grand ballroom. Corpse wasn't in the best shape. Aside from that, I don't know a whole lot. Helen was supposed to host the unveiling for Rizzo's newest product, Spectrum Brown. Until you catch the killer, the unveiling has been indefinitely postponed. Helen's death has been a shock for many. A lot of people are inconsolable. Hell, even the black hole birdie, Helen's bow has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but I don't believe it. Hey, black hole birdie may be a savage brute on the field of honor, <laughs> but he's no killer. We should ask if they're comping the minibar. This might take a while if you get me. Dig it. Folks get heated when it comes to serials and their actors, I suppose. Okay, was she a divisive figure? Mm, not particularly. But I think some folks were jealous of her success or otherwise viewed her as a threat. Reckon how she came about her fame didn't help. Okay, how did she get so famous? Why, Stripping? she was a natural. People fell in love with her. She managed to wrangle up a following all on her own. Yeah, right. She ended up about as famous and high-runged as your average VP, which rubbed a lot of Byzantines the wrong way. Actors ain't supposed to get preferential treatment. Let's see here. Oh, I already spoke briefly about the Spectrum unveiling, or lack thereof. It's still an awful shame. A lot of folks looking forward to that. Okay. I thought you worked for Slug, not Rizzo's. I do. Rizzo's happened to rent out the Grand Colonial Ballroom from Slug for the unveiling. A nice mutually beneficial event. But the murder's gone and ruined that. Along with nine out of ten of my favorite cereals. 
Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. Bags? What bags? Uh, you're making fun, right? Your luggage, belongings, kit, wherever you keep what you ain't wearing. I uh, know. You're still giving me a pretty blank look. Suppose it's none of my business, but do you just wear the same set of clothes all the time? <laughs> no, that would be ridiculous. See, you say that, but I still ain't seen no bags. <laughs> know what? Never mind, it's not my business. Anyhow, I'll look for you in the grand ballroom later. Hope you can unravel this mystery, Inspector. Did we really wear the same clothes all the time? <laughs> I guess so. Um. I heard my part and my medical skills are through the roof. Um, hmm. We don't really use handguns. We use heavy weapons. <laughs> All right. All right. So Something in my ear. I could sworn you just said we aren't allowed to depart. The atmospheric complex is on complete lockdown. No one's allowed in or out until the murder investigation's concluded. Do you have any idea who I am? I could bury you under six tons of paperwork before you had the time to cry out for your supervisor. I'm sure you could, but we fed our last box of grievance forms into the incinerator a few months ago. Is there anything I can do for you in the meantime? I cannot believe this. I can't believe Helen's gone. We're never going to get a sequel to Terror on Monarch. You don't need that. That's a bunch of lies. Sublight Underground takes care of its own. Right. right. She's obviously brainwashed. All right. So. Actually, let's take a look around. No good detective. We're the future of Sublight. Just you wait and see. We don't toss troublemakers out of airlocks. We just throw them over the edge. I understand the lockdown. Really, I do. You've got your job to do, and you'll get fired if you don't do it. Thanks for the understanding. I wasn't finished. Couldn't I just go out on a ship for a brief period? A handful of minutes, maybe? Just a quick trip to Byzantium so I can check on my stocks? I promise it won't take more than an hour. Sir, for both our sakes, I'm just going to pretend like you didn't say anything. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look around. Greetings, Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. Great. Sublight Underground appreciates your patronage.
fancy place. I hope they're not expecting us to pay. So this is how the other half lives. I wanted to hear if they had anything. Hello. I can't believe Helen's gone. We're never going to get a sequel to Terror on Monarch. That's all anybody cares about. Hello. Bertie Holcomb is likely beside himself in grief. Supposed to be a fate like this. I almost can't imagine someone wretched enough to do such a thing. You don't think a dissident could be here, do you? Get a hold of yourself. The administrator would never allow someone as dangerous as a dissident here. Eridanos is safe. This is all just a terrible coincidence. Of course, of course, you are absolutely right. I think the idea of a psychopath wandering among us is just making me nervous. You know, I never imagined Spencer Woolrich would outlive Halcyon Helen. Really? I was nearly attacked by a terror ray on my way here. Terrible. Mr. Kincannon really knows how to run a hotel. Mr. Kincannon really knows how to run a hotel. Hmm. <laughs> that seems to be a common opinion of Mr. Kincannon. What is a spectrum? If it's brown, yeah. You know, for a monument to the wealth of the elite built on the backs of the working class, it's real pretty. I guess. You can ask Miss Ellie about that, but I'm not going to give away her secret. The murder has inflicted severe emotional trauma on me. I demand a room upgrade. <laughs> Pardon me. Concierge. I'm sorry, sir, but while the hotel is an active crime scene, I regret to inform you that all new bookings, room upgrades, room downgrades, and in-room massages are suspect. Oh, you're the special inspector. Mr. Kincannon warned me you'd be checking in soon. Right. Um, who? Why, you. Oh, right. While you're here, Inspector, could I set you up with a room? Uh, sure. For you, only the best, sir, of course. You'll be staying in our luxurious penthouse suite, vacated just recently. So recently that, unfortunately, the room's still being cleaned. I'm sure it'll be ready for you by the time you've examined the crime scene. I believe Constable King should be waiting for you in the Grand Ballroom. Didn't see the grand ballroom on my way in. Oh, the ballroom's right behind the tower elevators. Swing a left or a right, then cut through the crowd of spectators. You can't miss it. I'd like to check out that room that they just cleaned out. I'll bet you ten bits this is all just some sort of publicity stunt. With Halcyon Helen gone, does that mean Spencer Woolrich will get all her roles? I certainly hope not. That man doesn't even act as well as I do. <laughs> the crime scene's awaiting, Inspector. Can't believe something like this could happen in my hotel. When I found her, I was just hoping she had a little too much to drink, but all the grievous bodily injury adds up, I suppose. She's lying in a pool of blood, and your first thought was, I wonder if she's drunk. Hey, Byzantines and restraint aren't two words that often go together. Wouldn't be the first blood-soaked, unconscious party gore I've come across. Anyway, I'm sure you've got questions. You want to give me more details on how you came across the body? Sure, I'd take into checking the barroom every few hours prior to the unveiling. Just to make sure no sprats had snuck into the place. 
You understand? Found her right before I was set to head back to my room in the lower levels for my mandated five-hour sleep period. Tell ya. Thank the law for caffeinoid. Been too upset to get a wink of sleep since. And hey, now I can finally see smells. Ah, uh, did you kill Helen? You tell me if you did, it'd be our secret. What? No! Just because I found the corpse doesn't mean I made her a corpse. I was in shift all day. Besides, I loved Helen cereals. Well, the old ones anyway. The newer episodes are hot junk on a warm day. Um, any idea why Helen would have been in the ballroom after hours? Beats all hell out of me. Dancing? Maybe she was, uh, practicing for the unveiling? Back to my other question. Sure. What's on your mind? Did you see Helen on the day of her death? Of course I did. I just told you I found the body. <laughs> That's not my man. Oh, wait. Uh, you mean when she was still breathing? Right. Um, uh, no, no, of course I didn't. Plus, it's untoward for an employee to speculate about the actions of a hotel guest. Not that I saw any hotel guests interacting with her. Now, look, I think we both know that you're itching to gossip. Honestly, you're more than a little right. <laughs> I've been burning at the britches to share my theories. Okay. Day of her death, I saw Helen leave the hotel premises with the profit of profitability. And didn't see her come back. A little on the suspicious side, I think. Seemed especially strange, seeing how, as far as I was aware, the two didn't get on. What's the deal with the profit of profitability? Is he or she a guest? Uh, yep. Gives seminars on increasing profit margins and the like. Can't say much else, seeing how I ain't in the gossip market. Right. Why didn't Helen and the prophet get along? As far as I can recall, Helen dismissed the lady's seminars in some kind of interview. Said her co-star had used them, but she didn't. The top rungers are always ready to read between the lines of famous folks and seem to think the prophet was on her way out. Woman lost a ton of bits and is set to lose more. Oh, so she's she's not really a profit profitability. I hope all that helped. I'd that like to be as useful as I can in the investigation. Just didn't want to steer anyone the wrong way. Right, yeah. Got any ideas who might have wanted to do Helen in? Everyone's got theories. I don't reckon mine hold much more weight than anyone else's. All right. What do you think? Guess I ought to call you Inspector while we're on Eridanos. Yeah, Inspector. Let's talk about something else. Something on your mind? Never mind. Um, let's go uh, check this out. Black Hole Bertie's disappeared, you know. That poor fellow must be inconsolable. Yeah, or guilty. Guilty as a son of a bitch. Profit of profitability. All right, let's go check it out. Ah, man, I can really use some more perception. Um, it's only good. Uh, let's see if I got any any pills I can take for perception. Mind attributes. It only lasts a few seconds. I guess. Oh, this. Uh, Alright, so it's like in here. We're all part of the Rizzo family. Oh, thank the law. Constable. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. Constable Keene, nice to meet you. We spoke over the etherwave. Constable Maria Keene. It's good to meet you in person, Inspector. Dr. Goodnight. Ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on. Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. What have you got for me, Delphine? Is it directions? Uh, 
What have you got for me, doctor? An extraordinary contraption. You'll love it. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. Oh, my sis. Okay, what does it do exactly? I'm so glad you asked. Allow me to explain. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Okay. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. That sounds like something OSI teaches. Oh, goodness, no. I don't care for OSI doctrine. I just enjoy their math. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but... I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. The discrepancy amplifier. Greetings, Inspector. Thanks to the half-genius, half-mad scientific mind of Dr. Goodnight, you've been granted the discrepancy amplifier, a handy investigation device for uncovering clues throughout Randennis. Be sure to equip the discrepancy amplifier in a weapon slot before you continue your hunt for Helen's killer. All right. Um. <laughs> discrepancy amplifier. All right, I'll put it there. Okay. Uh. Oh crap! I'm gonna have to take another one of these pills now. Scanning a radius for evidence. To catch Helen's killer, you need to use the discrepancy amplifier scope to reveal clues not visible to the naked eye. Once you've located some evidence, aim directly at it while zooming in with the scope. Press the interact button to analyze. The discrepancy amplifier is now operational. Greetings, designated inspector and or unauthorized arsonist. This unit has detected a discrepancy related to Halcyon Helen. Unscheduled expiration of. Begin amplification. I see. You've been designed with a modular analytical system. What else can you do? Oh. The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed with advanced speech recognition scientific analysis, and deterministic calculus protocols. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier, tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. <laughs> the discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. Great. Let's get started. Tell me about this discrepancy file. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the grand ballroom. Right. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Discrepancy amplifier. Do you decide if these footprints match anything you have on record? Footprint is a teller made. 8.75, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. Can you analyze the dirt? The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonial. Okay. So Helen must have been at the orchard before she died. This deduction appears sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. 
Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. Great. You're, uh, really digging around Helen's body for clues, huh? Mm-hmm. Halcyon Helen introduces Rizzo Spectrum Brown. Draft number three. I'm Halcyon Helen, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome so many important rich guests to the unveiling of, read the following with due significance, Rizzo Spectrum Brown. Thought Spectrum Black was the pinnacle of quality? Think again. Now your taste can reach new highs with the wonderful Spectrum Brown. Containing notes of, look, list, whatever you want here. Just make it sound good. <laughs> Rizzles has put the utmost in quality into their new beverage. Brown also contains a special secret ingredient that can't be found in any other type of drink. Each refreshing sip will leave you feeling more ecstatic than before. It just might have something to do with that. What do we say here? The worm in the bottle. <laughs> Flavor enhancing trifle at the bottom of the bottle. Thank you all for coming to this unveiling. Thank you to Rizzo's for allowing me to speak here. Remember, if it's brown, drink it down. I knew I should have gotten her autograph when I had the chance. You'd think these people have never seen a corpse before. <laughs> All right. If it's brown, drink it down. Try to solve the puzzle hedges in the orchards. The prize is supposed to be something valuable. Puzzle hedges. All right. Concierge. The Grand Colonial Front Desk warmly welcomes you, Inspector. It's a pleasure to see you again. How may I be of assistance to you, Inspector? Um. Grand Colonial sure is. Interesting. Actually, you have some high-profile guests here, right? What can you tell me about them? My apologies, Inspector, but that would be a severe violation of guest privacy. We here at the Grand Colonial firmly believe that... All right, my supervisor just walked out of earshot. Some <laughs> folks just don't understand the importance of gossip. About whom? And what would you wish to know? Um, did you notice anything about Halsey and Helen? before she died. You know, out of everyone here, I probably knew the least about Helen. I'm not much of an Aether Wave watcher myself. And Helen always had a crowd of admirers chasing her, you see? So she rarely stopped to chat. Friendly enough, surely, but always seemed untouchable. Emphasis on seemed. Did you ever see Helen acting strangely? Hmm. Now that you mention it, 
She was usually calm and collected, but every so often I'd see her looking all wild-eyed and intense. It seemed as if she was determined about something. Or maybe she was just hungry. <laughs> that woman ordered a lot of food. Maybe show business gives you a faster metabolism. Okay. You, you know, out of everyone here, I probably knew the least about Helen. I'm not much of an Aether Wave watcher myself. Okay. And Helen always had a crowd of admirers chasing her, you see? Yeah. So she rarely stopped to chat. Friendly enough, surely, but always seemed untouchable. Emphasis on seemed. Was he closer with some people than others? Everyone wanted to be around Helen. She could usually be seen alongside Bertie or Woolrich, for obvious reasons. Okay. Her black old Bertie was staying here. Ah, uh, Bertie. Is he bigger than he is dumb, or dumber than he is big? I have a bet with a friend. Not sure we'll ever get it to pay out. Bertie used to be Helen's beau, though he isn't anymore, and not just because she's dead. If I had a million bits, I'd spend every one just to learn what caused their split. Okay. She's got some productivity guru here, right? What's her deal? Her deal? Not making them. I'd laugh at my own comment, but everyone knows there's no bigger joke than the prophet of profitability herself. Didn't you hear Helen's interview? That woman is the definition of humbuggery. Anyone who <laughs> gives her the time of day is a right fool. I mean, Spencer Woolrich has taken several of her productivity seminars, and look where it got him. Don't waste your time. Okay, so Helen's co-star, Woolrich. You have any reason to want her dead? <laughs> if looks could kill, he'd have put her in the ground <laughs> ten times over. Man's clearly jealous of her success compared to his. Right. <laughs> See, I'd bet we're the only two people thinking about him in all of Eridanos. And I only am because you mentioned his name. If you leave woolly cow milk out, it turns to curds. Leave the curds out, they begin to get stale, then rot. Woolridge is on his way to the trash bin, and right. everyone knows it. Either he's in denial, or he knew Helen would be checking out soon, judging by his increasing demands for a room upgrade. Oh, okay. That's enough gossip right now. That's a shame, Inspector. What if I wanted to know a little about you? Uh, well, let's see. Well, let's see. I, I'm a, I like that my reputation speak for me. Then I guess we'll have to see if you find Helen's murderer, won't we? Myself and all of the staff at the Grand Colonial will be rooting for you, Inspector. Well, thanks. The Grand Colonial sure is interesting. It certainly is a marvel of modern ingenuity, luxury, and ambition. Please, allow me to answer any curiosities you might have about our building and the amenities on offer. What does the penthouse have to offer? Twice the size of the next biggest room, and kit it out with any amenity you want, as well as many that you won't. Best to enjoy it while you can, Inspector. Typically, the only people who can afford the penthouse suite have enough bits to suffocate everyone on Terra 2. Oh, I see. Also, please inform me if Woolridge gives you a hard time about getting a better room than his. Don't tell him I said this, but everyone on staff wants to strangle him. Okay, I won't. Is there anything special about the upper levels? Most certainly. All the important folks can be found in the utmost parts of the hotel. Oh. You can hardly walk three feet without bumping into a tossball grate or a bored exec. Though maybe don't bump into them. It could be harmful to your health. Okay. No one seems to talk much about the lower levels of the hotel. Who would be interested in a staff-only area? Most folks never ask about the sewers beneath the Rizzo's plant, either. I've been down there, too. <laughs> you can't honestly tell me there's nothing of interest an entire half of the hotel. Of interest to your investigation? Well, I suppose there is that one door we're not supposed to open. <laughs> but I'm sorry, Inspector. I'm not authorized to grant you access to any staff sections of the hotel. I'm the inspector. You'll have to find a way in on your own. Okay, that's... Okay. Let's Who see. would be interested in a staff-only area? Most folks never ask about the sewers beneath the Rizzo's plant, either. Um... Well, that's rude. Guess you don't lump yourself in with, you know, 
That's rude. Not mincing words, huh? Let's get over to other levels of the hotel. Of course, your interest is my pleasure, as dictated by Mr. Kincannon, Inspector. Okay, that's enough about the hotel. If you're sure. Wanted to check if my room was ready yet. Ah, yes. We are most pleased to offer you our grandest of grand accommodations, okay. Inspector. The penthouse suite on our topmost floor is now available for you. The last guest left her belongings behind when she vacated unexpectedly, so we needed a little time to tidy the suite up for you. Damn it. Simply call the elevator in the lobby, and our highly skilled operator will deliver you to your private floor with efficiency and cheer. I didn't want you to clean it up, dog. Gone it. Ah, goodbye. Damn it. They cleaned up the room and fired it. Oh? I was nearly attacked by a terror ray on my way here. Oh, terrible. Damn it. They cleaned up the room before I could get up there. Damn. Darn. Darn. Darn it. Well, okay. So I'm going to speak with the administrator via. Okay, so I have to talk to him to get access. Hello there, my inordinately esteemed guest. If my hello were any more earnest, this loudspeaker would explode. Whose authorized floor can I bring you to? Hmm. Bring me to the penthouse suite, please. Next stop, the finest seat in the house. Take it around. What do you think? There's, um, there's no room service, right? Just ask him. Everybody's here. Hey. Ugh. Even the air in here feels too sweet. Almost sticky. Why is everybody complaining? Did you know the smoke from high society cigarettes is 10.07% more likely to leave odor and discoloration in fabrics than other leading brands? I know who that voice is. Hi there. <laughs> Yes, man. Hey. I call the big bed. Anyone wants to challenge me, we can play a hand of cards. Feel free to take it. Where is... Oh. Oh. Holy snap! I didn't want them to clean it up. Not want them to clean it up. The last person that vacated this place. I did not want them. Oh, what the hell? inside this suitcase matches the silhouette of Halcyon Helen's iconic handgun, the Needler. The weapon was recently removed. Ah. I 
I'm gonna bring moves. Ah. So someone took our gun. What's that? Okay. So someone took her gun. Helen, where did we go wrong? Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. That didn't mean for... Okay, that wasn't incriminating at all. Oh, welcome R. Bellamy. From Ministator Ludovico. Miss H. Helen from to Ruth Bellamy. Who's that? Thank you for choosing the Eridanus Atmospheres Complex as the site of your next publicity marketing campaign. By endorsing the Spectrum Brown product, you are allying yourself with a revolution in the leisure beverage market. Indeed, in the culture of Halcyon itself. We're going to change the world together. From Profit of Profitability to Ruth Bellamy. Helen, I don't understand why you and I must be enemies. Are we not both branches on the same tree of privilege? You command audiences with your masterly performance on the eat the way. I command the attention of our corporate leaders. We both are cultural icons with a responsibility to set a good example. I'm disappointed to discover you berated my seminars publicly and on official records. I take particular umbrage in your characterization of my most recent seminar, spearheading your project, how to motivate your workforce using aging weaponry as a, and I quote, nonsensical vanity project from a dying a wool buffoon. These are fighting words. Expect to hear from my personal auditors soon. Personally, profitability, P.O. Money can't buy happiness and other lies we tell ourselves. A new seminar by the Profit Profitability coming soon. From Cedric Ken Cannon. Miss Bellamy, you're a talented actor. I've enjoyed all, all of your roles across the years. I'm especially following your performance in Terror on Monarch. Ludovico doesn't appreciate the serials. Maybe that's why he never knows when he's being played. He still thinks you're here to endorse Spectrum Brown. Your performances has him fooled. Huh? Guest advisory. Safety is our responsibility. In light of recent unfortunate events regarding the passing of beloved cultural icon we at the grand colonial have doubled the number of armed guards for only a small security surcharge 
Surcharge is not refundable. Grand Colonial is not responsible for death or disbarment that occurs off hotel grounds. I realize it's some sort of energy weapon. Join us for the profit of profitability <laughs> seminar. Think of it. Everything's so soft and silky and expensive. Oh gosh, I hope I don't get any grease stains on the furniture. Don't worry about that. Clean them all up. Make it as dirty as you want. Hey. Is this how people in Byzantium live all the time? Ask Ellie. She can tell you all about it. Spatial acuity sensor apparatus. What the hell is that? Plus one perception. Ah! Intractical highlights. Oh, hell yeah. Perfect. Let's go make that call. Inspector, I understand you've visited the scene of the crime. Right. Halcyon Helen was an important cultural icon. She will be sorely missed. You mean Ruth Bellamy? Halcyon Helen was just a character. Halcyon Helen was more than a character. She was a brand. Her death will now be associated with Rizzo's Spectrum Brown. You understand why that worries me. Well, any publicity is good publicity. Ah, I wish I had your blithe sense of optimism. Helen's death means delays. Delays mean expenses. Expenses mean audits. Audits mean people like me lose our jobs. Back to the matter at hand. Tell me about your investigation. Hmm. Got a lead. I can't tell you why, but I need access to the orchards. Your discretion is appreciated. I admit, I'm beginning to feel more confident in this arrangement. Here, I'm granting you access through the gates to the orchards. You're officially authorized to see this investigation through to the end. There is one caveat. Cedric's being rather intransigent about letting you into the spaceport. Possibly he's trying to hide something. Possibly he wants to annoy me. Possibly 
bow. Hmm. Being rather entranced by letting you into it. I'll be out of that mind. You have a lead to chase. Law speed, Inspector. All righty. Hmm. So I get to choose who I want to take. 